very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. As you know, it's the last one for the week. We'll make it worth your while. From the city of Lagos, right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebaya. It's always a delight to have you join us to talk sports in London. I must stay in Okonakwan. All right, a quick rundown of uh, what to expect on the show is what I'm going to do next. Uh, of course, for our viewers, uh, we have to let you know uh, some of the things we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the NWFL Super 6. It will get our thoughts uh, tonight. We will also talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League. We're winding down. We'll talk about the Prosperity Cup. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, the English Premier League, uh, the last game of the season. Last set of matches for the seasons will be played. We'll take some reactions and we'll also look forward to the French Open. Before we came in to the studio, uh, just like breaking news, but something that we all expected, the ATP in conjunction with WTA all stripping uh, Wimbledon of ranking points. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, as far as that decision goes, they've made Wimbledon just like an exhibition game. So whoever wins gets a Grand Slam title but doesn't get any ranking points. Very interesting. And also Russia's Daniel Medvedev says he's not going to court. He will not go to court, even if he's not allowed to play at Wilbur. So that's the outlook of the show today. Austin, of course, something that I left out that we're going to start with, of course, the D Tigers making it public that they do not agree with the decision to take them out of uh, international competitions to keep them in the wilderness for two years. I, I mean, I can't blame the ladies because they've put so much work into qualifying for, for the World Cup, you know. So basically what they're trying to say to these guys is uh, the, 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 the two-year uh, suspension doesn't change anything. So why can't you, you guys just come together now and have a rethink and, and find a way to, you know, make our efforts pay. I, I totally agree with them. I stand with these ladies because I know the level of hard work that they've put into qualifying, uh, their level of determination, the passion that they've displayed. So, yes, they have every right to say, look, we, we don't we don't agree with this. You know, we, we as athletes, we should have a say. And I, I totally agree. Yes, when uh, the federal government was making that decision, they should have consulted the players because apparently they were only considering the administrators and officials of basketball in Nigeria. What about the guys who are, you know, the major reason why we talk about basketball most times, I mean, is because of um, this, these players are watching right now. So if there's a big competition as the World Cup coming in September in Australia and they've qualified and you're going on to, to ban basketball in the country for two years, then they have a right to say, uh, a thing or two about it. And now that, they've, that the federal government have gone on to, you know, make that decision, they are now coming out to say, look, we don't agree. We don't agree with this ban. And I totally agree with them, Yemi. Yeah, and um, at the end of the statement put out, it was a passionate appeal to the federal government yeah. to, re to rethink. Uh, they may declare that they do not agree with what they, whatever... But decision, whatever thoughts that led to the conclusion and the decision to take them out. But then again, because uh, they recognize that uh, in themselves, um, you know, they represent Nigeria and uh, the people who make the decisions are the ones that have done this. So I, I like the way it all ended and said, look, we make a passionate appeal. The question really is, where do we go from here? Uh, because I expect the authorities, of course, to know that the D Tiger, the D Tigress, the stated it, uh, the state making it clear emphatically that they do not agree with this decision. And it's obvious they weren't consulted. They weren't consulted, probably just the administrators. Yeah. Uh, that were consulted. So the big question is and who's going to bulge? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was trying to say. They needed to just be polite, they needed to be courteous, and they've done their part. But if you take a look, the tone actually is, you guys sit right and start making the right decisions, you know? Um, this thing has been going on for so long. And it is, as I said earlier, that the players get to suffer. Remember, the D Tigers, they came out of that long appeal for bonuses, wages, allowances, salaries. 
that they, they were like, look, well, in fact, they were the ones who gave the first threat that they're going to pull out of international competitions if they don't get their money. They've not gotten that money in, in, uh, completely, but they're delighted they've qualified for the World Cup. And now this two-year ban, it's not good. It's not good in any way for players. Some of us were sitting on the fence and saying that if this is what would bring change to the administration of basketball in the country, then let it come. But then again, if you look at these ladies and what they've done for the country, then you know that it does not go to them. So yes, that's the that's the tone they needed, you know, to 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 finalize that that release, appeal to the federal government. But the same uh, with this with this uh, appeal also that. You guys, you guys should just act right. Do the right things. We're not responsible for for all of your crises, so don't let us suffer. I mean, do you know the joy of representing your country at the World Cup? In fact, just competing at the World Cup is going to do a lot to the careers of these women. And because of some selfish administrator and, and administrators and people who don't have the passion of basketball or the interest of basketball. These ladies will now suffer. I, I stand with them. I totally agree with them. So the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development should find a way to, to deploy proper conflict resolution tactics. Bring everybody that, that is involved in this and let's find a way out of it for the development of the sporting country. Yeah, we, we, we need to we need to do that. All right, Alfred Okolive is with us uh, on the show tonight. Greetings to you, Alfred. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show. A very good point to bring you in. We're talking about the open letter, uh, of course, from the Dita Gray's reaction to the federal government's decision to pull Nigeria out of uh, uh, the basketball family, uh, you know, for two years uh, to just keep them on the wilderness well, with the aim to develop the game uh, at the grassroots. So, I mean, your thoughts on what they've done and do you think it will make any difference? It should make any difference uh, because uh, part of the, what we're told why um, the decision to pull, uh, to pull Nigeria out of um, um, the basketball family was that they received correspondence from, I mean, you could, that was what we're told. I uh, received co correspondence uh, from some of the players on the team. Uh, the players that are not, they're not going to play under 13 uh, chairman. Now, in our time, it has now turned out that uh, that's really not the case. Because at the end of the day, I'm waiting to see who will tell me that the queen out of you know, Nigeria from international basketball, who it will really benefit at the end of the day. Uh, because ultimately, what the end of the bedlam in the country, for example, um, the agenda first crisis, because if I want to walk up, and all of a sudden, the federal government will now say, uh, you know what, because of the um, seeming infighting in football and the rest of the office, we have had a long history of it, and uh, we will not be going to Qatar. I mean, the better land that will follow, is it because it's basketball? So, um, it, it is right that the girls come out, at least we look for, for a starting that um, all of the issues about not wanting to play for Nigeria doesn't, um, um, it doesn't hold water at this point. Um, I mean, the combination of whatever we do in the sport is to play at the highest level. When you play at the highest level, what it does for you is that it opens doors for the next generation of players that will come through. Because if you do very well, they will talk about it. Oh, it's okay. Um, uh, this is a proper basketball playing nation. We see how they, how they evolve. They are not only dominating the continent now, um, three teams, champions, back to back champions. Those are the girls. These are the girls that took out some of the big teams in the world to rightfully beat their place in the World Cup. And you want all of that to go because there is, um, according to you, infighting in, um, uh, in, the, in the basketball family. I mean, it is, I'm still scratching my head to um, understand the reason behind um, taking that kind of decision. So the girls have to, and I think it's right at this time to just make it. All clear. What we need to do if we stay through, uh, if we follow through this ban, and at the end of it, if these girls are earned the right to play this competition, don't play. The message is, is, is telling clearly is that hey, uh, tomorrow you want to look for players that will, like well, shopping for players playing in football, like uh, getting players that are born in England, that are born um, in Europe, anywhere else to come play for the Super Eagles. Tomorrow, the, what the message you're sending is 
hey, don't wonder if you qualify. Perhaps maybe one minister or sorry, uh, somebody will just come and tell you that, you know what, we're not going for the World Cup. I mean, uh, I don't think it's the best to do uh, in the uh, Committee of Sporting Nations. I have not, not had that process before. So I, I think it's the try the girls are speaking out. And the, you know, it takes courage to say, you know what, perhaps this decision I didn't get it right. I just look at it again to uh, reconsider my stand in, in a certain issues. And uh, it would be a big shame if, if, if that is not done. All right. Uh, it's our hope here and um, generality of Nigerians that the federal government will rescind the decision and there will be sincerity of purpose, gather all the stakeholders together and see how all of these matters ca can uh, be sorted out. The girls don't want to be denied of the opportunity to play at a tournament they qualified for, in spite of the fact that some of the things they are entitled to, they still don't have it. They're not even talking about that. They're talking about we qualified for this with our sweat and it's only fair that you allow us. And I'm very sure if the guys would write a letter, probably it's, it's going to be uh, along the lines of what we've seen uh, the ladies do. So we'll see. We'll see what will happen. Uh, of course, what we are waiting to see is whether or not this will have any effect. I pray it does, but uh, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed as we move on. Guys, let's just quickly uh, talk about uh, what uh, happened today in Addis Ababa. Uh, final round of qualifiers for the under-17 FIFA Women's World Cup. Nigeria, uh, one leg uh, in, the in, in, in the World Cup. Uh, we were able to beat Ethiopia by a lone goal, courtesy of a goal scored by Okpayemi Ajakai in the 36th minute. And of course, that takes our tally to six in the qualifiers. And uh, I mean, Austin, we're in a position we want to be. Just come home and finish off the Ethiopians. Well, it is, you know, and then qualify for uh, the women's under 17 World Cup that take place in India. Um, we've never doubted uh, the women's team at this level and at the under 20 level uh, because we've got so much talent. Now we're talking about Ajakaye. As she has scored in, in almost every game. So that's a name to look forward to. Not just to Chakai, most, most of the players in this team, they've showed good promise, they've shown good prospects. So uh, we, we we just hope they get the job done at the MK Abiola uh, Stadium in Abuja for the return leg and then just book a ticket to the World Cup to be good to see them because it is from this stage you build progression and then you plan for the future. So congratulations in advance uh, to the team and let's just wish them all the best in the second leg. Okay. Uh, Alfred, I want to get your thoughts uh, as well. Uh, like Austin said, our worries have never been whether or not they will qualify. Uh, what, what really uh, we all always wanted to see is if I mean, the gap between us and the South Americans, the Europeans, even the, Ameri the, the, the North Americans, maybe that gap uh, will gradually, gradually close down. Uh, it, 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 whether we have talent or not um, at uh, this level, at like the dead level, it's not in doubt. Um, it's nice to hear the first things that are coming through. I happen to have seen the under 17 girls, when the likes of my sister, the girl, and the rest of uh, my cousin were coming through. I mean, coming through the ranks. If at the end of the day, one or two of these girls make it at the uh, topmost level, um, I think what we should try to do is to tell us talk to us. Um, I like what the end of the actual is saying um, in terms of organization, in terms of uh, putting things together, in terms, in terms of being in your face. Um, I think when we have these structures and structures coming, we have a bigger pool to choose uh, to, to put players from because the girls will be really, really easy. Sometimes um, it's not talent at this level that is uh, a challenge for all of us. We're still on the 20 girls, we get to the final for the competition um, uh, twice. And that means at that level is changing. And we, how far we got at the World Cup, it's at the highest level when well, we're supposed to have um, been, uh, you know, up there. That's the big struggle. And I think we're having the right structures, having the right um, uh, philosophy as to where, uh, I mean, when it comes to the women's football culture, who is really directing their first, what is the technical department doing, uh, uh, all of the players in, in sync with what is being done at that level. To know that, okay, when you come to Nigeria, this is the kind of people 
we just play. What is the thing behind our football? You know, they fully improve from the cadet level right up to the senior level. So I, I think that is an area that um, should be of uh, interest on football for us. But um, against the Ethiopian staff, I think you win away one year. When you come back, you just finish the job and you the World Cup. But I will be really, really happy if we have one or three of these girls soon off. It's okay. Uh, these are the girls that will lead us out to from the cadet level to the under level. So we are seeing you first uh, coming to the horizon. All right. Uh, it's our hope that um, of these girls, um, we'll see players that will be on the scene for the next 10, 12 years, just like some of the lads we have in the senior national teams have progressed from uh, the age grades. We'd love to see some of these girls uh, do that for us as well. All right, let me quickly pass the bait into Austin. Uh, just a few, a few minutes, like two, three minutes to uh, break. But also, let's quickly talk about the NWFL, the Super Six. And also, if we have time, uh, during this segment, we'll also talk about uh, the big one this weekend at the NPFL. Uh, let's just run through results from the, the, the NWFL Super 6. Uh, we, we know the story already for uh, Edo Queens uh, and, and how it has stunned uh, for them. But they needed to, you know, get one for, for the home fans, you know, because they've been struggling in their last three games. So today they defeated Niger Retails by a single goal. Nine Sarawa Amazon had to bow to Rivers Angels by two goals to one. And this is Rivers Angels for you. The moment they start winning at the Super Six, they don't blink. So let's see if they can repeat what they did last season. Bielsa Queens also still powering strong in the Super Six, defeating Delta Queens by a single goal. It's already match day four of the 2020-2021 MPFL season, the Super Six. So uh, there you have it. Al Alfred, at this stage... Will you be too confident if you okay? Let's just run through the fixtures from um for Sunday. Bielsa Queens will take on Natural Amazons. That one will be a very, very a uh, crunch encounter. Niger Retails will take on Delta Queens, while Edo Queens will take on Rivers Angels. I might just do some, you know, something to Rivers Angels if Edo Queens, you know, pump up some energy to uh, to go all the way. But definitely it's gonna be an interesting game of football. Alfred, March day five on Monday, but let's talk about March day four and what we've seen, Rivers Angels and Bielsa Queens showing us that they are not joking. Uh can you confidently say these two teams can make it uh, to the final? Uh, I think you have the same game. And uh, last time I uh, Queens lost by um Yossi. A three margin, perhaps a quick and Um, I mean, all of the mistakes they made the last time around, they just want to correct them and move forward this time around. Um, don't forget that, like, um, my other things are the court champions. I was in the last year when they won the uh, when they took out the uh, Robo Queens in the finals of the women's um, uh, for the so they, they have the pedigree. And, and one thing I like about, about them is that uh, they kind of support the right for the two states. Um, the two things that you're talking about, rivers. Uh, Rivers Angels and um, Kaisa Queens, they kind of support they are getting from the state government. The, the, okay, for the other things, you might say, okay, they're getting support, but and, and at that level, uh, Rivers Angels, uh, it's all the, the government did last time, and that's enough motivation for them. Mm -hmm. All of the things we got for the men, we also got for the women. Uh, they travel in spite, they travel in comfort, and the rest of them. Uh, and so, I think for women's team, um, it, it, I have a support for, 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 the, for the game, I mean, for the United game. It needs all the support that they can get. Um, because um, during the week, we had that um, historic um, um, agreement with in the U.S. Um, whatever comes in, they put it in the court and everybody gets equal between the men and the women. Uh, to my home. And this claim, some of the guys will say, you know, we bring with uh, all that cookie. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but I mean, it tells you the level of support that the society that is given to women's team. I think, our, I think our girls at this time, and it's because one, one thing about the women's team is, is this: some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. Some of them are closer to the family than the men. So they need all the support mm -hmm. I get. I agree. And there's so much in it now because of the 
introduction of the Women Calf Champions League. So the winner gets to represent mm-hmm. Nigeria on the continent. It's post tonight on Channels Television. We'll quickly go on this break. When we come back, we'll touch down in Rio, uh, the state capital of Aquaibom, and then find out what's going on in the final of the Calf Confederations Cup. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Before we went on that break, Yemi, I told the viewers who touched down in Uyo to find out what's going on in the CAF Confederations Cup final between Orlando Pirates of South Africa and RSB King of Morocco. Over to you, Yemi. Yeah, and um, I just tried to find out, and that's it on your screen. 62 minutes of football played. It is goalless uh, right there in Uyo. Uh, the Akwai Bomb State Capital, where the CAF Confederation Cup final is being played uh, right as we speak. Uh, interesting game of football it has been. And trust us, uh, as we always do, uh, if there's anything to let you know, we will revert as we bring you uh, everything happening right there. will be your eyes and your ears just to let you know what is currently going on. And of course, if, uh, if the pre-match talks from both sides is anything to go by, you will expect that both teams will go down fighting. And uh, that's what we've seen so far. Um, none of them are wanting to yield uh, any ground uh, in this game. We'll see, we'll see how far it goes. Well, situation report right there in Uyo. It is goalless between uh, Orlando Pirates and RS Bacane in the CAF Confederation Cup final. All right, let's move on on the show. Austin, let me also allow you uh, to take us through these as well. The MPFL fixtures is we're getting to that stage. It's getting interesting as we go. Uh, a lot of talking points. Let's take a look at the matches for this weekend. Let's run through them. Then we talk about them uh, as uh, we go. Austin, Austin, there you have it. Take us through what we have on the screen. Abia Warriors will host play two United in Ugu Rangers. We go against Dakada FC in the Nigeria Professional Football League. It's getting interesting on Sunday. Aqua United will welcome Niger Tornadoes. Gombe United will take on Kwara United. Kano Pillars fighting to keep their top flight status. We take on Heartland FC, struggling at Heartland FC. Katsina United will host Aimba International Football Club of Abba. It's the Nigeria Professional Football League. At this stage, if you blink, you start asking questions. Yemi, I can't even believe it. I was, this is already March Day 29. And Alfred, we must, March Day 29. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what can happen, but with what we've seen this season, um, can, can this title fight go down the wire? I think it can. Um, uh, seeing the way it's going now, the Rivers United is beginning to drop points on the road. Two successive games now, um, they drop points. Mm. Winning on the road has become a bit more difficult. And um, you know that uh, you mentioned Kanu Pillars. Um, who would have thought that they would be fighting to save their Premiership status? So it's more difficult than getting points up. I mean, some of them, you know what they say in um, those that Chino Achebe writes of, the firewood, the firewood you fetch in the morning is what you use in the evening when um, night comes. So all of those points on the road now has become, has become very, very valuable. And, and so the, the the top guys look more vulnerable now on the road and, and, and can't be beaten. And the reason being that everybody wants to finish well and the league is so tight that between the 10th uh, 10, 9, 10 to the bottom, just two poor results, and you find yourself struggling with the guys with the guys at the bottom. So it, it's that tight. Yeah. So you expect that, um, okay, for example, Rivers was a Remo this weekend. Uh, Remo dealt a big blow by that released by the LMC this evening that two two of their players um, suspended from the league uh, indefinitely and the open. Uh, and uh, Issa Ali, the one that was invited to the Super Eagles camp, uh, because of registration issues, they were suspended. That means uh, so two key players in that team, not part of this one, and they'll be going to put that card. So um, you would expect Rivers United to win, but if they win at home, what happens on the road? I think this is where any 
somebody that picks up a waypoint, any form of any waypoint on any point on the road now, will very very valuable. Even if you draw on the road, very very valuable. Yeah, and and that's what I that's what I want us to talk about. Let's talk about teams that can pick points on the road. Quare United going to Gombe United. Aimba going to Katsina United. And this one, Yemi might not want MFM going to Shooting Stars. <laughs> for for <laughs> MFM, I think, I think they have to look themselves in the mirror and ask if we really, if we are up for the challenge. Uh, because um, they gave themselves a massive boost by that win on Sunday morning against Kano Pillar. That day, by the way, that game was played about 8 in the morning. Uh, that was a massive win for them. Though it didn't leave them from the bottom of the log, but it just gives them that breather to say, okay, you know what? If we have enough belief in ourselves, we can we can push this, uh, we can push this through. Don't forget that it's a, it's a derby, it's a south, south um, west derby for shooting stars. You know, shooting came to Lagos and got all three points. They want to consolidate at home. They are mid-table and they just want to finish on the upper part of uh, the season. I think I put it at Goye. And so far, you know, when they came to the Premier League, they said their ambition is to maintain their premiership status, which is very, very key for a team that is just coming in. It is where you now come in and you stay at least in season that you begin to attract players that want to play for a lot of the big players don't want to take the risk of a team that just getting promotion come play for them. Only a team like Remo has been able to have a mixture of some experience and uh, old players. So it's um, whether whether so, I think it's up to MFM to decide if they would really want to fight for their their survival. But United going be United. Mm. Pantami is a very difficult place for teams to visit. It has over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And one, they have the numbers. They, that stadium is always packed each time a game a game a game comes to comes to town. And so, um, you, you know, the fans, the some for some teams is the twelfth man. So. It gives that nine impetus. I think Gumbi has done fantastic, uh, fantastically well this uh, this season. So uh, it's going to be difficult. I don't see Paris United, except they want to prove me wrong. I don't see Paris United getting something in that game. Another team that has been in a way is, uh, okay, the Yimba, Katina United. I think under uh, Coach Abdallah, Katina United is a different proposition now. Um, there was a time they, it was a big struggle for them to pick points on the road and at home. Yes, uh, win, drop points. But I think since the arrival of uh, Coach Abdallah, the different proposition. Uh, don't forget that that game against Kano Pillars that was headed, I think 78 minutes that game was stopped. They still have that to play. If you enter the draw, it means they would have earned one point. So um, their religion, rel- uh, religion worry is easing a bit. Um, for Yimba, they've started scoring, which is good for them. They've started, they've started scoring. Um, whether we the, um, as you know, Katina is a pretty long, that's one of the farthest distance. I mean, if you're coming from the east um, to the north to go play, it's a, it's a, it's a whether the journey will not take its toll on the players. Um, the, the people's elephant is a big team, and I'm sure that um, if they put in their A game, they might just get the result that they need. Perhaps a draw. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, before we leave this segment, we, we love away victories in the Nigeria Professional Football League. It gets us talking. So what you've seen with MFM, any chance for them at Shooting Stars? Hmm. <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough question. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I, I think there are problems. I, I would love both teams to remain in, in the top flight, and it, it looks like shooting might, might stay. Uh, if you ask me this question uh, before they start, I'll say my problem with shooting is they come up and they go down. But in this case, uh, a lot of self-inflicted wounds by MFM. Um, it's even more likely that they, even though Alfred has told us uh, where Aimba is traveling, it's very difficult to get points. I think it's even easier for me to say Aimba than to say uh, MFM. The, the, probably the best they'll get is a draw. Uh, I mean, as much as I don't like predicting games, but it, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult for me to see them picking three points in the battle. Honestly, it's, it's, it's very difficult. I totally agree with you uh, on that one. So we'll wait to see uh, what match the 29 of the MPFL would give to us. Wow, man. 
actually 29 already. I can remember when this league started. Let's continue with the show now. A uh, quick update from the Wafu B uh, tournament. Alfred, you following that? It seems the Flying Eagles might just go on to win the lead 1-0. Well, it's, I, I think this is, um, this competition has kind of um, redeemed uh, with Ladan Bosu. Because the last time we went for this tournament, we didn't even come out from, from it. And uh, all of the things that happened and the competition did not hold. So this is like um, a redemption time for him. And he has, he has covered himself in, himself in glory, doing all of the games, winning the game, drawing, I think won their second game. Um, if they win this one, it's going to be a massive, massive boost for um, the players that play in the, um, in the local front, um, the process of making it to the senior level has been made very, very difficult. It's almost impossible for them to get it. So for the guys, young stars who play in the league, this is a massive boost for them. And, you know, when you qualify from the World Football League, there's the African tournament in Egypt to play for. That means there will be uh, chopping and changing. And, and so... Any young man there who is under, under the age, who is within the age bracket, it's an opportunity for you to bring your A game. You might just be supported by the scouts and then we go for this competition. The moment you attend this kind of competition, and that's what I say about attending competitions, as well at the early level, it opens a lot of doors, a lot of opportunities out there. And you never can tell. We saw uh, Victor Simon uh, come through the brand, played in this same under 20 tournament. Um, uh, in Egypt, um, that was with uh, okay, no, that was a young Igalo set he played there. But the rest of the guys, that is, that is Ahmed Musa also passed through this. All of them, mm. you know, today they are the backbone of the Super Eagles. So it is a very key. That's yeah. why if if we don't do well in youth competition, um, it's kind of it's kind of um, you know you lose a generation of players because one yeah. they didn't have the opportunity of attending a big competition, mm -hmm. so they might not be known. The next That's true. thing, it's in their CVs, and you start asking from where do you come from? He said, ah, no, I was part of Coach So and So team that didn't qualify for the World Cup. He said, no, if you didn't qualify for the World Cup, that means you're not good enough. So it's good that we qualify. And so kudos to Coach Lara Busu and his, and his uh, words for, for really keeping the flag flying. All right. Uh, that, that's a good one. Uh, and I hope, like you said, they'll get a chance to qualify through uh, when they get to the uh, under-20 AFCON. That's the main one. If you don't qualify, people really don't uh, talk about you. Let's quickly touch down in Bielsa State before uh, we go on to talk about the English Premier League. Let's quickly uh, talk about a three-day international scouting event uh, that uh, took place in Bielsa called the Prosperity Cup 2022. Uh, and of course, you had the Bielsa State Governor, uh, of course, visiting the event. And of course, he had uh, good things to say about talents uh, discovered. I was uh, very impressed uh, talking about uh, uh, Governor Doe Deary, uh, the governor of Bielsa State, and he, he had kind words, uh, good words to say, and he, he made bold to say uh, some of these talents will, uh, of course, do great things uh, in football in the years to come. And notable international football scouts uh, were there for that uh, three-day scouting program. Of course, the SS is to scout for raw talents. Uh, those raw talents were uh, available in abundance at the Prosperity Corp. We also called on foreign and local scouts to mop up those players that they have discovered because talents are bound in the state. We'll give you more updates on the Prosperity Cup uh, as uh, we mm -hmm. uh, go, go on. Uh, but it's always heartwarming when we see all these things happening left, right, and center in Nigeria. Even for yeah. the ones that, that don't get the chance to play in age grade tournaments, you, sure. never, can, you never can tell. This also uh, presents an opportunity to get to the top when uh, the opportunities come their way. Guys, let's move on on the show. We are pressed for time. Let's go to Austin's backyard. Let's talk about the English Premier League. That's our next port of call. Let's take a look at what is happening this weekend. A lot of scenarios, a lot of stories. I mean, when you look at when you look at Manchester City and Liverpool, before I even take a look at the fixtures, a lot of people are asking, what would Steven Gerrard do? Does he hold Liverpool something? A lot of people are asking that question. What would Aston Villa do? Jack Grealish left Aston Villa and there are there's a clause in his contract that 
gives Aston Villa 15 million pounds or thereabout if they win anything that Jack Grealish is involved with. So if you're Aston Villa, would you want to stop City from winning and losing 15 million pounds? I don't know. But it's going to be very interesting. Arsenal will take on Everton. Arsenal fans happy Everton has qualified, so maybe they will take it easy. Who knows? Uh, Brentford will take on Leeds. Brighton will take on West Ham. Burnley take on Newcastle. Chelsea will take on Watford. These are matches. All of these games will be played simultaneously this weekend. Let's see some other fixtures in the English Premier League. Crystal Palace will take on Manchester United. Leicester will take on Southampton. Liverpool will take on Wolves. Manchester City will take on Aston Villa. Norwich will take on Tottenham. Like I said, <laughs> funny things happening. You have some Manchester United fans saying they would rather City win that Liverpool joining them uh, at, at the top uh, in terms of number of wins and, and, and all that. It's very interesting. But let me go to Alfred. Your take on what you think Aston Villa might do to the title race. On one hand, if City wins the league, they get something. Steven Gerrard is their manager. Some feel he holds uh, Liverpool. I don't think he holds Liverpool anything. But what do you think will play out? And a lot of people have said... Even if Aston Villa play 20 players, they wouldn't beat City at the Etihad. You know, a lot of people say a lot of things, but what's your take? City has smelt blood. They know that the title is theirs for the taking. It is within their grasp. It's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, these stories about um, uh, Gerard owing Liverpool owes them nothing. At the end of the day, if City wins and uh, Aston Villa loses, everybody's a winner, everybody's happy. Uh, I mean... Um, it, uh, it's that tight. Uh, but Liverpool has shown consistency. Um, in all of this, it just shows you that why the EPL is widely followed, why a lot of people talk about it. And because nothing is, nothing is decided. The title goes down to the wires. The teams for relegation between Burnley, uh, between Burnley and Leeds United goes to, um, uh, goes to the wires. The last thing for uh, the Champions League, even though I, my, my thinking is that that already has been decided. Uh, Tottenham must go. If for uh, for the opting time, winning um, the only trophy uh, for the season, that of finishing ahead of Arsenal, they've done it again this year, <laughs> and so the season it's a good one for it's a good one for them because um, if you look at the history of Tottenham, I mean, ask yourself when the last when last they win something as significant, um, finishing ahead of Arsenal is enough consolation uh, for them. I think it will happen again for Norwich, but Norwich no. Um, <laughs> They're already relegated. Whether they be pumped enough to put up any fight, so the the EPL is that's why it's commanding so much in terms of revenue, so much in terms of um, TV um, rights and the rest of them. It's it's been a fantastic season, and and we'll just be watching with keen interest and see how it unfolds. Okay, all right. We need to go on a break right about now. When we return from that break, we'll listen to Pep Guardiola. Of course, Austin will give us his take, fill us in with some of the things happening right there. Then we'll spend a few minutes we have left after that to talk about tennis all after this break. I would say because it's more difficult. And when it's more difficult, it's, uh, it's a lot of weeks, a lot of games. Uh, struggle with injuries, with the good moments, bad moments, with uh, different situations, with the tough opponents. So, yeah, it is. But the success has been there the last five years, all the time there. Except the year like uh, Liverpool also was unstoppable, and we were not good enough in the be in the beginning of the season. That season, the rest all the time we were there. So, uh, yeah, satisfaction because it's you know every day, every day. It make it, I think the, the, when you fight the Premier League and you have success right at the end, give you the, the sense that you enjoy a lot during the, you know, we are happier in our lives, private life, in our job when you win. And when you win and you win and you win, because otherwise you cannot fight for the titles, for the Premier League, that makes you make a good weeks, a good training session, the environment, the mood, the happiness is higher. <laughs> A very calm, very calm Pep Guardiola, not under any form of uh, pressure. Let, let me just go to Austin. You know, we're on the home stretch now. 
I mean, react to all of the things, all of the angles. I mean, I saw something uh, in the news this morning that uh, <laughs> when Arsenal asked about Gabriel Jesus and they told them it was going to 55 million pounds and, and they responded that if they had um, such uh, amount, they would go to God directly. You know, all kinds of funny, funny stuff uh, that makes you laugh, shows how... Uh, we enjoy uh, the English Premier League. But, but your take, um, Pep Guardiola appears to be very calm. He has to be, you know, because there's so much pressure. And you heard him there saying that the English Premier League is the most difficult, you know. This is a top-class manager. I was, was seeing action from you know, other leagues saying that the, the Premier League is difficult. And yes, I totally agree with him that it's difficult. You're dealing with the press, you're dealing with the fans, you're dealing with the club owners, you're dealing with different stakeholders. And there's just so much pressure when you're a top team, you know, to just win. Uh, right here in the kingdom, in the United Kingdom, uh, fans of Manchester United are saying Manchester United better give them a winning end to the season against Crystal Palace because if they don't win and West Ham wins against Brighton, then West Ham will finish ahead of Manchester United. Manchester United might drop to seventh or eighth. So you see that that, that pressure, you know, it, it's right there. And for some teams, you're as good as your last game because don't forget, there's so much tied in this. For instance, Arsenal fans in the UK. I hear them calling to radio stations and say they want Leeds to get relegated so that they can go for some of their good players, particularly Rafinha. You know, so you get to hear all of these things on the final day. You mentioned that Everton is already safe, so they might not take that game against Arsenal seriously. That's not true because they want to sustain the momentum. As I said, you're as good as your last game. These guys are professionals. So it's going to be a very difficult game for us now. Someone will say, oh, Norwich is relegated. Uh, what can they do against Tottenham? You never say never because there's just so much tied into football matches in the Premier League. It's not just, don't just look at the table and conclude. So we're definitely going to have a dramatic end to the end of the season. Um, to the season. If you take a look at it from the, the, the teams fighting for top position to the teams fighting for fourth to Europa League places to even relegation, it is all going to be competitive and we cannot wait for Sunday to come. Yeah, we cannot wait. All right, guys, uh, let's spend a few minutes we have left to talk about the French Open. It's upon us. Uh, it is coming. And let's talk about Novak Djokovic. As, as a matter of fact, the news today uh, is what interests me. But, of course, we're going to talk about no Novak Djokovic. Again, for our viewers, uh, the ATP uh, and very sure the WTA will follow suit. Those are uh, the... Uh, Bodies running the base and the women's tennis following uh, Wimbledon's ban on Russian and Belarusian players. They have decided that that tournament, this year's tournament, we have no ranking points because denying any player apart, you know, denying any player the opportunity to play the game. Uh, it's not fair and all that. They have their rules and they released a statement. That's what has happened uh, today. But let's quickly listen to Novak Djokovic. He's planning to successfully defend his title. And, uh, of course, he's in a confident mood. Uh, well, I mean, we talk about... Uh... Favorites for Roland Garros and Clay, you know, the Nadal always has to be right at the top, I mean, because of his records, uh, particularly in this tournament. And then, you know, you have Alcaraz that obviously is, is um, a story of immense tennis in the last four or five months uh, with a big reason. I mean, he has said some tremendous... Uh, leaps forward uh, on rankings and the results that he's been achieving are, are phenomenal for someone of his age and he has uh, made a quantum jump really forward uh, in, the, in the last five, six months. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm always uh, in, the, in that contention to fight for the, any Grand Slam trophy. I believe in my own abilities uh, to get far and to to fight for you know one of the most prestigious trophies in the world of tennis um as a defending champion of course more so to to believe i can do it again uh reliving the memories from from last year is something that obviously gives me goosebumps and uh, motivation to um to try to replicate that if I can say that but I mean obviously every season and every year is different and 
there's you know so many players that that want to put their hands on that trophy um, in in few weeks time. And <laughs> okay, all right. I'm told we have to go, but I think it's only fair. Allow Alfred to say something. Alfred, quickly before you go, your parting shot on the show. Can Djokovic successfully defend his title? Nadal is injured, might not be 100%. Djokovic has not played much this year. Do you think, quickly, as fast as, fast as you can, do you think he can successfully defend his title? Well, um, it's, it's really going to be tight. Um, don't forget that um, he struggled um, with all of the bans and COVID and vaccination and all of you. A uh, big struggle. But, um, all right. It's, it's like this season, this year, it's... A bit of a level playground. So we'll see how okay. it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right. After I want to thank you for your time on the show today. Hopefully we'll do this again some other time. Pleasure is mine always. All right. Uh, so that's... Th that's the show today. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. Of course, we'll be here again next week to take you on a trip across the money-spinning world of sports. From the city of Lagos right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo saying bye-bye now. In London, I'm Austin Okonakwan. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports by for now. <laughs>